Smart and rich women build an audience, not a following. Why is it important that you focus on building an audience and not a following, and what's the difference? Stick around and I'll share with you three things you need to know about why building an audience is the key ingredient for women to successfully build a business and become that rich woman. Hi, my name is Chef Katrina. I'm one of the co-founders here at Truth Women Academy. And I've been teaching the digital and online marketing world for the last 15 years. And I've recognized over the last 15 years of teaching that the information I was teaching didn't serve women. Now, you might think that's kind of a weird thing to say because I've successfully taught women how to build six and seven figure businesses and they've gone on to do extraordinary things. But what I started to see amongst women was that they were burning out. They were experiencing a fatigue level that was unlike anything that their male counterparts were experiencing. So I knew something had to change. And when I started going through the difference between a woman building a business and a man building a business, there are some significant difference. One of the things I will tell you that women thrive when they focus in on building their audience and not just a following. So let's go back a little bit. I'm going to share with you three points around why this is so important. In the original idea of what the guys have been teaching us is that we've been taught to go after an avatar, a singular person based on demographics, financial situations, a little bit of storytelling. And while that served us for a time period, it no longer serves women, especially in the world of building a business online. Here's why. Let me explain. In Avatar, the original concept was, you know, were they male or female? Were they of a certain age demographic? Were they of a certain area or region? Um, and where did they have a certain income? Did they have a certain lifestyle? And a lot of this was gathered through phone calls. <laughs> there were phone surveys back in the day. Um, a lot of this was fill in the blank surveys. The information that we had on people was much smaller. And when we were talking about advertising, when we were talking about Uh, targeted marketing for the newspapers, the radios, and the television industries, they were looking really specifically at regions. So it was important for them to know demographically who were in those regions and what pockets, you know, were available so that they could, you know, target their marketing to them. So the avatar originally, when I was starting to learn, was an of as a bunch of numbers, to be honest. It felt really inhuman to be talking to someone of a certain age, a certain money level, a certain everything else, and it took the humanity out of the type of person that we were looking for. So the avatar had served its purpose, but the reality is is that it's evolved. It started to shift over the last 20 plus years because there was an introduction into the world of social media. In the world of social media, when we first got started, the avatar did serve us in the beginning. For the first five or six years, avatar training still made sense for what we were doing. The cool thing that kind of happened over the last 20 years is that as everybody started using these digital media platforms, they were sharing everything about their lives. The specifics of information started to kind of become a little more broader. What we recognize is that people of different generations could be having the same business experience, even though they're not in the same age demographic. You know, we have people that are earning certain incomes that are of all demographics and age groups. So this narrowing down of people really had to expand out there. So it did work in the first part of social media. But now that we have so much information on people and what they do and that's what social media giants are selling ads for is because now they can get you really targeted on who you should be talking to or who's this uh, um, for because they're listening to you now through your phone they're listening through you to your tablet every time you talk about a certain product or service if you ever picked up your phone and been like hmm how did they know i was just going to be asking about that so our electronics and our technology are listening to us all the time so they're collecting mass amounts of data on our lives and our daily to do's so with this one of the things that started happening with social media is we became obsessed with following oh my gosh i so remember this like after 2010 everything became about your following. How many followers do you have? I was teaching and training and asking this question almost in every coaching call. How many followers do you have? How fast is that growing? As if the followers were as indicative of like this person's success. And what we discovered is that the followers are vanity metrics. So having a bunch of people follow you, especially now as we have entered into the 2020s, 
what has happened is that we've gotten a lot of bots now. There's a lot of bogus accounts. There's a lot of duplicate accounts. There's a lot of false accounts out there. There's a lot of trolls out there. Trolls are individuals that have nothing better to do than just put negative stuff about your video, you know, or your content out in the world. Like, they are just unhappy people. And it's not their fault. There's so much negativity in the world that it kind of makes sense. So this whole idea of following became more of a vanity metrics, especially with around views, how many people have viewed your videos. Um, there is so much that is truth and lies in the, in the data that we see as consumers that you have to ask yourself, is this a true audience building or am I just building a following to build a following? And a big following doesn't necessarily mean an engaged or a buying following, right? So this was something we had to learn. And again, it's knowing that the information that's out there, is it old information? Is it new information? Is it relevant information for what's going on now in the world of marketing? Because marketing is evolving all the time. And understanding that gives you the edge, especially as female entrepreneurs, right? So as a rich woman, you don't wanna focus in on an avatar, that's impersonal. As a rich woman, you absolutely should not be looking at your vanity metrics of followers. That's just a tip of the iceberg for what's really going on. What you wanna look at as a rich woman that's building a successful business that's taking time for herself is you wanna build your audience. An audience is somebody that cheers you on. An audience are people that you connect with directly and indirectly. You may be connected to your audience through an associate or friend that knows and likes you and then they recommend you to somebody else. See, I love an audience because an audience is truly engaged with you. They're buying your products, they're cheering you on, they're repelling the trolls that are out there. When you can connect to your audience, it's a whole nother way to do business. And that's what I love about what we're teaching inside of Unlocking My Millions. We actually have a complete section around building your correct audience, your right audience, right? Because it is about your audience. And your audience, when you come at it, and I think women do a really great job of this, and especially rich women, is that they understand the connection that needs to happen. So when we look at building that audience, we're looking at what problem are we solving? We're looking at how are we helping them overcome their biggest obstacles. We're, we're out there cheering them on when they stumble. So having an audience means a relatability to them. It means understanding where they're at and why you're there to serve them and what result you want them to have. And understanding that their journey as a customer is going to be different for each person, but you want them in on the journey. You want them to buy in on this entire process of building that business with you. Because when you build an audience, they will tune into you. You know, they'll watch your replays. They'll want to be engaged with you. They'll, if you've got a problem, they'll help you solve it. And that's the beauty of building an audience. So if you want to learn how to really dial in your audience and not just your avatar, not just your following, but really dial in how to serve your audience, then you absolutely want to play with us inside of Unlocking My Millions. Unlocking My Millions is the first ever a cohesive 360 look at how women build business. We are tying into your strengths. We are giving back women confidence in building their business. We're showing you how to save time or increase time and make more money in the little things that you have to do. When you understand the power of an audience, you actually work less and earn more because your audience is willing to buy over and over again from you. And that's the magic of building an audience. That's the magic of connecting to your audience wherever they're at. It's the trust factor. It's connecting to their higher purpose, what they want to accomplish as another female entrepreneur, or as a business owner, or whatever you're teaching and serving people in. You've got to connect to their higher purpose and they have to have your trust. When you have that with your audience, Man, oh man, it is a beautiful thing. So if you want to learn how to build that into your business, then head over to truthbombmarketing.com and take advantage of joining us inside of Unlocking My Millions. This is your time to really bust out and break through and have the success in the business that you want. We can't wait to see you on the inside.